Okay, and so a lot of the questions I've been getting were, how do I price? So there are three different price matrix, easy house, medium, and hard. And also renting and purchasing. Both include install and takedown, um, but the purchasing, they can opt to hold it themselves and find somebody cheaper to hang them in the future years or you know, if they move, they can take all their stuff with them. Also, if they choose to buy, they can keep them up all year round. Sometimes it matches the paneling really well and it's really hard to notice that they're there. So that's one of the benefits of purchasing the lights. Or they can rent the lights and then we take them down, store them, and then they have the option of changing colors every year, which is really cool. So I have three different prices. I know I'm gonna get killed on how much I charge and what I should charge. So I'm gonna keep it vague, like 250, 350, 450, just so you get an idea. And you guys can charge whatever you need to, um, but that's how I do it. So let's say it's an easy house, just straight line, small ladder. It would be $2.50 to rent the lights for me per foot, so per bulb. And again, you measure it and you get pretty accurate pricing with the measuring stick. So you can go off of that. That's what we do. And if they wanted to purchase it, it would be a dollar more. So it'd be $350 for them to purchase. So if it was 100 feet, it'd be $250 to rent from us or $300 to buy. Now that's a small house, so the price doesn't seem very much. When you start getting to like 150, 200, the difference is a lot bigger. And so, so anyway, and rarely do you do a house that's just 100 feet. I mean, not really common. So, um, and then let's, for example, a medium house would be $3 to rent a foot, and to purchase would be $4. And then if it's difficult, the lowest we charge is $4.50 to rent and $6 to purchase. Now there are times where it's like really difficult or the whole job is difficult, like every bowl will be difficult to do. We customize the price on that, but sometimes most of the house is pretty simple, but then there's a difficult section. So we, we, do, we do price custom that way. So we'll measure the easy, quote it as if it were easy, and the difficult section, we would quote just that section as if it was difficult. So if there were, let's say 75 feet, just above a garage, super simple, we'd quote that as the easy price and the 25 foot peak with 25 lights on it, we would just quote that section as difficult. So that way the price is still affordable for the homeowner. If you were to do the whole thing as difficult, it'd be you know, a $600 100 foot as opposed to you know, $400. So see the difference can be really high if you quote the whole job is difficult, but you're more than welcome to do that. I've done that in the past for sure, but I think changing it, doing a, a mix of the two per house, you get a lot more sales. So after that call came, uh, Bronte measured the property, gave the client the price and they said, go for it. And since we're shooting a video, I just wanted to get it done today too. So we're here. Um, pretty straightforward house. We're gonna do three sides of this house. We're gonna do that side, this whole side, and over there. Um, it's on the corner, so it's gonna be a good deal. So I'm gonna start with the gloves. It is kind of cold out. We're gonna go with white to match the paneling. So when I get to a house, I look at it first to stock up on everything. Since there's gonna be a lot of peaks connections wise, I'm gonna need male and female plugs. Um, so I'm gonna need two, four, six, eight, at least eight that I can see. So I'll probably put 12 of each male and female just to be ready. So I don't have to come back to the trailer. That's always my goal is to stock up so that I don't have to come back here. And then you always have to figure out which color wire you're gonna need from the roof down to the plug. And since there's brick right there, I'm gonna go with brown. Um, and I don't need gutter clips. 
So this is pretty normal. Me just looking at the house, you know, making sure I'm stocked. I don't think I need gutter clips. There's a section by that window that might be a little tricky, but I'm gonna see if I can just get away with the regular clips. Um, that would be better, it would look better too. But if not, if that doesn't work, because the, the panel is really close to the window there, so I may have to do gutter clips just above the window. Now again, some people would use gutter clips all the way on the gutters, but I'd rather slide the clips in. So mainly on this house, all I'm gonna need are the male and female plugs. I always have replacement clips, so if I'm putting them in, if they snap, I can just pop a new one in there, so that's in here. I also have end caps, um, so I can, instead of putting the duct tape or electrical wire at the end, I can put end caps to make it look nice. And other than that, um, I have my Leatherman, and I'm just gonna put my extra sharp cutting pliers. Um, I'll put those here too. So yeah, so I'm just gonna put this on and start. Oh, last thing. I've got my empty little container for all the bulbs. We're gonna do warm white on this house. The next step, I put all the bulbs into this container so they're easier for me to screw into the strand. Okay, so when I first got here, I wanted to start on that side and work my way to the garage. But because of where the strand clips are, it dictates which way you have to start. So I have to start on that side if I want a longest continuous, if I wanna be able to clip and move the roll and keep going, I gotta start on that side. And it's no problem to start whichever way. So a lot of times the strands won't all be rolled the same way. Sometimes they're rolled backwards, then you can start the other side. So that's why I'm starting this side. Now this strand, I must have not been paying attention. I cut it too short to this. So I'm actually gonna cut this one off and cut it again right here so I can put an end cap. This is not enough room for an end cap. I'm gonna use the medium sized ladder because the, eventually the peaks are gonna be pretty high. Um, so if I get my small ladder, I may not be able to get onto that one. So instead of going back and forth, I'm just gonna start with the medium and see if I can finish it up with just this one ladder. Okay, I could move the ladder every five feet or so um, and, and put the slide the clips in that way. But what I'm gonna try and do is get on the roof. It's not very steep, so I don't need my, my cougar paws. I'm just gonna go up with my normal sneakers um, on the roof and just lean over and clip them in. It goes so much faster that way. So here, I'm gonna cut this one off because the end cap is won't have enough space right there. So I'm gonna cut it like right here. And then you gotta split the two. And then what you do is you put these two in there. And then you slide the top on. There it is, now you've got an end cap. Now we've got to screw the bulbs in. So, still try to keep it close to the house. So when you screw these in, you want to do it softly. When you get to the end, maybe give it one more snug, tight fit, and that's all. Because sometimes, if you screw them in too hard, it will actually pop the backs out. Um, it's very rare, but when it happens, it's really annoying. So I try not to use too much force. Uh, and then you just keep going. And if you can, you try and plug them in as soon as possible. If this were a second or third level up, I'd, I'd stop what I'm doing and try and plug them in so that as I'm hanging them, they're lit up so I can see which ones are out since I'd be really high. But since this one's pretty low, I'm not too worried about it. If we finish this and then plug it in at the very end, I can take the ladder and just fix whichever one's broke. So those are little things that you'll pick up as you start developing a style. Um, but this, I'm just not gonna worry too much about it on this one. Okay, and as you're going, sometimes there are nails that will keep the, the bulb from moving and then you'll have this like slacked. So what I do is I take it and I just tuck it under the paneling. Kind of like 
that. When I first started hanging Christmas lights and I would see a gutter, what I would actually do is I would try and unroll a whole bunch and try and stuff it all the way through here so I can get underneath or I would cut it and make a new connection underneath here. But since the paneling is white, I can match this really good. So I'm gonna show you a little trick. So I'm gonna put a, put a light as close to this gutter as I can, and then I'm just gonna bring the strand across the front like this. And go like that. See? Um, I know up close, it kind of looks a little off, but when you get further away, you won't even notice it. Okay, you know how on the front of the garage, I was able to climb the roof, and you would think that I could do that here on the side, but because of the gutter, it makes the reach a lot further, so it makes it difficult. So I would just move the ladder in that case. Okay, so I've got a plug here. I'm gonna leave this alone for now. I'm gonna start clipping in the lights over here. And once I get it all the way out to where I want, then I'm gonna run a Z-wire from here. And I'm gonna kind of hide it and then go here. But first I'm gonna put the bulbs up. Okay, so I've connected my Z-wire to this wire right here. I'm going over here and I'm gonna to connect to this side right here. Now, what I used to do in the past was I would make the cut on this Z wire to connect to this perfectly fit perfectly. But what I always would forget, and now I don't forget anymore, is that remember the next season when you're coming back, sometimes you start an inch back somewhere, somewhere around the house. And when you get here, that inch is not long enough. So then you've got to like cut and redo things. So I always give myself a ton of slack. So instead of cutting it here like I would in the past, I now will cut it here. That gives me, you know, an extra, I don't know, foot to mess around with. Because even though it may seem straightforward to start on the corner, start on the edge somewhere, sometimes you don't understand why you're off so much. And if you cut it perfectly uh, the first time, you're gonna have problems. So I always cut myself, give myself some slack now. So you always want a light at the peak. So the string is so far, you don't want that. That just looks bad. Don't ever do that. Please don't do that. So what you'll do is you'll get as close to the peak as you can. Okay, and then you tuck in the wire. Then you get the next one and you match it the same length as the one before. So we're about right there. And then you take this wire and you tuck that one under. And there you go. Voila. One of the parts of doing Christmas lights is getting the wire down to the plug and this part can actually be kind of like an art because you want to be as like subtle with it as possible. And so I tucked it under here, went over here, so, so if that happens, I actually have a little trick I want to show you. You can take a replacement clip, see, and you can cut it. Kind of like that. So all you're left with is the actual little clip. You can put this in like this, and then you can go like that. This brown matches the the brick and I'm gonna turn it on right now. The best thing to do is plug this in as soon as possible, like as early as you can. So when you start hanging lights, you can already tighten them in as you go and you don't have to go back up. I guarantee you if I turn that on now, because I'm already, I've already put all the lights up. When I turn that on, it's pro they're probably gonna be bulbs that are out and that's normal. If you get them to where there's no bulbs out, you're freaking the chosen one. Uh, but because this one was a, was a lower level house, I wasn't too worried about it. So that's why I didn't focus on it. But anyway, let's see what happens. Okay, there's one out right up there. There's one over there. So I'm just gonna start on this end since I'm already here. And I'm gonna start, I'm gonna turn that one on. Turn it tighter. So 
So, as I'm putting my vests away, I don't just hang it. I actually put everything away. So I always know what I have on hand. If I have to count and things that get left in the vest uh, might get missed. The one thing that is important, and I don't have any now because they all work, but sometimes there's bulbs that I, that I have to unplug when I'm up there because I don't need it or something and then I make a cut. Sometimes the winter whites or the warm whites will stay in the vest by accident. And so when I go to another house and I need a bulb, sometimes I, I have a bulb in my pocket. I don't know if it's from the new batch or if it's from the old house because there's really no markings on it to tell the difference unless you turn it on. So anyway, we're all wrapping up here. So once I stop job, a form will pop up like that. And it asks me how many bulbs, what colors they were, and where did I start, and if there's anything else that we need to know. So the next year, we'll print this out and put it with this roll of lights. So that person will kind of have an idea. And also, we keep track of the lights, how many in case we raise our prices, lower our prices, we know how many bulbs were at this house kind of thing. Okay, so this job was $760, and it was about $200 in parts for the bulb, strand, and everything. So that means profit was $560. Not bad. And again, this was kind of one of the easier ones. Um, we would we quoted this one as medium because of the high peak over there. Um, so anyway, there you go. If you have any questions, let me know. Hopefully this all helped you out as much as possible. And you can go out there, make some money. Again, be safe. Don't think that this easy houses are super easy because when you're up there on the roof, you realize that if you slip, you can hurt yourself. So take every step on the ladder, give every step on the ladder respect because at any moment, heavy wind gusts can come. You're not paying attention. And I will say the times that I feel like I'm always like, whoa, slip the most is when I'm almost done. If not the last clip, you sometimes on the last clip, I just lose focus. And that's when I usually catch myself and realize I need to pay attention till I'm on the ground. Anyway, if you like what you see, comment, click like, subscribe. I appreciate it. See you next time.